Welcome back to the podcast. When we last left our heroes, Jim and Matt, <laughs> they had done the easy part of their quest, actually. Yeah, the easy part, <laughs> we, uh, we agreed. We're taking a look at our March Madness bracket. Um, we've got eight franchise hitters, heavy hitters. Each one of these games could sell, you know, five million units in their sleep, I think. These are all excellent franchises. We were Very lamenting franchises. lamenting how they're all coming out <laughs> yeah. in March. I don't have enough time <laughs> to play these eight games. Yep. That's the problem. Um, and we took a look and tried to weed out some of the ones, you know, just, you know, if this were a March Madness bracket, there are winners and there are losers. They're yep. all great games. They're all great teams, you know, but uh, only one can reign supreme. So we took a look at Bioshock versus Gears of War. Um, and we landed on Bioshock. Bioshock took it. Yeah, yep. I think that there's a lot to look forward to there. And then uh, the second part of that bracket was Tomb Raider versus God of War. It's kind of the kind hype of versus the kind of... Uh, tried and true. Tried and true. That's exactly. a good way to put it. And I, I, I voted hype. Yeah, I think so too. Bioshock and Tomb Raider are both variables. You know, they could be great. They could let us down. We don't know. Gears of War, God of War, I think we can pretty realistically uh, predict what we're going to be getting with those yep. ones. Uh, but you know what? This makes it more fun. Yeah. We're taking a look at Bioshock versus Tomb Raider. So let's talk Bioshock, specifically as it compares to Tomb Raider. What are some of the similarities in these games? Um, so I think some of the similarities are that it's a lot about the atmosphere. It's a lot about feeling like you're in this world that, mm -hmm. um, and you're with this character, and you're on this adventure, and you don't really know how it's going to end up. Um, and you're probably going to be meeting some other characters uh, that you'll be interacting with and creating emotional connections to. Um, and, you know, they're both going to be based on gunplay. So one's first person, one's third person. But, um, you know, how's it going to feel to shoot the guns? And, you know, if you have to take cover and those type of things. Um, and I don't know if there's any kind of RPG progression elements in Tomb Raider. Do you know? Yeah, there's a, there's the whole hunting mini game and the way that you can upgrade your weapons and you you'll have a little bit of a camp and uh, you know so there are some, there's the concept of specializations. I think yeah. it's going to be similar. We'll call it RPG light in the same way that there's those elements in Bioshock where you know you choose your plasmids. Yeah. Um, in Bioshock, you can upgrade your plasmids, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's some choice about you what you choose. what you equip a lot is you know the combinations you you do. Yeah. Um, so it's not going to be, be like 50 there. gear slots or yeah, anything like no, that. No. It's not going to be World of Warcraft or, or even um, Mass Effect. But. I think another thing that will be interesting is that they're both very uh, focused single player experiences. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, they're very much about taking the player on that journey. And it'll probably be something you kind of, uh, you play and there'll be some twists, I'm sure, in the storyline. Oh, um, Bioshock. It Isn't wouldn't be right? Bioshock if it yeah. didn't have some sort of incredible twist. Yeah, uh, would you kindly? So, um, yeah. and so uh, I, I think there are definitely some similarities between the two. They're both like, you know, pseudo sequels, but kind of not. <laughs> yeah. And that they're from familiar uh, franchises, but they're both taking very different takes. And that's a great way the to do it. It's like if if the developers want the opportunity to take a risk and try something new and cool, yep. but the publishers want the stability of a franchise that they know is going to move units. Yeah, I think we talked that's in the great. previous podcast, so you can almost take the Bioshock out of the title and probably pitch this as essentially a new IP. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously that Bioshock's going to really help. Um, yeah, Actually, Ken it's a his... lot like what happened with Dishonored. You know, there yeah. were a lot of Bioshock elements in Dishonored, yep. uh, but it was in a new environment. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, to Tomb Raider could probably be the same. I mean, there's not probably going to be a lot of uh, similarities between this Tomb Raider and what we experienced uh, back in the 90s or even like Guardians of Light and things like that. So um, both new but familiar. Yeah, and, both um, going to be telling an interesting story. Uh, I think they're both going to be character focused. Tomb Raider is going to be more character focused because it is, of course, an origin story, um, and because the main character in Tomb Raider um, is, you know, a character that you relate with. Whereas in Bioshock, the main character. Is, do you even know who the main character? Yeah, is? I don't remember Maybe exactly from the previews, but I think you, I think really... you have a name, and you know, you have that. You have it's a not the focus. It's not Laura Croft. Yeah. You know. And one interesting thing is, you know, you know, in the Uncharted games, and I think you see in the Tomb Raider trailer. A lot, you know, it's a lot of cinematic shots, um, a lot of stuff happening in the environment, and the Bioshock games are known for kind of like you're always in that first person perspective, and it never really yeah. kind of pulls out to show you. So it's um, I'm, you, putting, you I'm putting that as more, a point for the Tomb Raider franchise. I, I think it can be if, if executed properly. I think if you you see that in Uncharted and a lot of the other third person games, 
Um, Dead Space does a lot of that right now too, um, where you just feel like you're on this kind of roller coaster. Yeah. Um, whereas uh, in a lot of the first person games, um, you feel perhaps more like it's you going on that, but um, it's also a little more constraining at times. All right, well, let's rack them up. What are some of the pros and cons? So I'll list out some of the ones we talked about so far. Uh, in Tomb Raider, you've got the amazing potential for cinematic camera. You know, we could do some really cool things with camera. Um, in Bioshock, I think you're gonna have better gunplay. I think the plasmids and the weapons combo, it just feel, it feels really fun and frenetic. And I think that the gunplay in Tomb Raider, if it's anything like the gunplay in Uncharted, it's gonna be passable and you know, somewhat forgettable because the focus is gonna be on the story. So that's interesting. I actually might disagree with you a little bit on that. I mean, when I think about Bioshock 1 and 2, like the feeling of shooting the guns and kind of the impact you got from that wasn't actually a standout thing for me. Oh, but the um, environmental the plasmids combos. were awesome. Yeah, plasmids well, the plasmids, plasmids was part of it. But like, you know, shooting the, the whatever, like was the rivet gun and that type of okay, stuff. Okay, so gunplay is the wrong word, um, but call it the combat system. But the okay. second to second gameplay, in Tomb Raider, you're going to have this really exciting clamoring and exploring, and it's going to be very cinematic. Mm -hmm. But when it comes time to kick some ass, I'd rather be doing it in Bioshock. Uh... I think you'll have a lot more creative ways to do it in Bioshock. I'm really looking forward to the bow and arrow. <laughs> I mean, I love bow and arrows. It's been a lot of fun in games like Far Cry. I was gonna say, did you? Was that like was, an, a first dude, purchase for you? I felt like I was hunting. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm out there like hunting sheep and deer, and I'm like at my bow and arrow, yeah. and it was like awesome. And so I don't know how much they're gonna do with it, but all the like you know press marketing shots I've had her with the bow and arrow so far. So I'm hoping they, like, really double down on that. And I think that could be really cool. I mean, it's kind of a weapon that's uh, just kind of becoming cool in games. And okay. so I think, like, being a badass hunter with a bow and arrow, kind of stealthy, um, could be actually more fun than your standard kind of, I got a, I got a World War One shotgun type thing. Trying to, All right, uh, so for cinematic feel, we're giving it to Tomb Raider. For storytelling and twists, capability for a twist, we're probably think, giving that to the story element. We're yeah, I think for, for kind of characters Bioshock. and that type of thing, probably Bioshock. And then uh, for the gunplay, we're split. We're split. It might uh, go to Bioshock, might go to Tomb Raider. What about the environment? Uh, I think the environment, a, I would... An uh, island with Tomb Raider. Yeah, I think I'd give that to Bioshock. Yeah, I mean, floating we, yeah, we, we've colonial seen, American. I mean, that's just... Environment and atmosphere is, is the one thing that I think the the but Ken and his team do better than almost anyone in the industry. Yep. And so I, I I think it's just gonna deliver on that. You're gonna feel like you've been transported to this world that you've never seen before that yep. could have really existed in a weird way. Um, and so I think Tomb Raider will have great environments. I think you'll have a lot of that action adventure. Um, but it's probably gonna be similar to stuff you've seen before with like Uncharted and how about um, some of the technical awards? Which one's going to have better sound, do you think? That's a tough call. Um, yeah, they both have a lot of potential there. Yeah, I mean, you know, in like, in like Guardian of Light, um, there were some great sound effects, but like um, the actual narration of like Laura Croft and, and the, uh, the side character you had was almost kind of phoned in. That one mm -hmm. didn't really seem like a standout. Um, the Bioshock audio, the bar, right. I mean, the audio in Bioshock was award-winning. I mean, I think yeah. it won all the sound awards that year. So I have to imagine that Bioshock's going to have an overall better uh, soundtrack and um, sound effects. I'll give the point to Bioshock there. Keeping with the technical theme, how about graphics, engine, you know, things like AI, pathfinding, like which is built on the better tech? Yeah, I mean, like, um, Bioshock did feel a little bit clunky back in the day. Maybe mm -hmm. that was because it was it looked so good for being pretty... Uh, it was only a couple years into really the console cycle. Um, and, you know, Tomb Raider is probably going to be uh, pretty refined as well. At this point, it's kind of tough on graphics because yeah. we're, we're, we're at, the we're at the seven or eight years cycle. into the cycle. People have kind of mastered the uh, the hardware. Yeah. Um, in terms of kind of like art direction, um, I think Bioshock has a much more kind of unique look yeah, going on. Yeah, it's got characters, it's got vibrant colors. Yeah, I mean, they like, it just, you know, things. kind of the, the, the silhouettes and shapes of their characters are, are obviously kind of uh, more unique. And so um, I, I think, you know, artistically, it's going to be more fun to watch and look at Bioshock um, yeah. than Tomb Raider. Not to say Tomb Raider's going to be bad, I think it's just going to be similar to what we've seen. In, now, how about in the stories? How about the story and the writing and the way that it's? Delivered? I think that's going to go to Bioshock too. Yeah, even yeah. though we're dealing with an origin story in Tomb Raider. I think I think Tomb Raider. Um, I could see you having more emotion. 
uh, more emotional connection. In fact, and, they, and they, that's a stated goal with this team. Yeah, Raider, I think is you to could make feel, Lara Croft feel vulnerable. I think you could feel a lot more empathy yeah. for for kind of the character that you're playing, and that could be a really powerful thing. I mean, that itself could kind of deliver um, on kind of that aspiration to want to finish uh, the game and, and really want to essentially yeah. help Laura out of what seems like a pretty tough situation that she's in. I'm going to give um, that one to Tomb Raider, not Bioshock. I think Bioshock's going to have an interesting twist, you're right, and the story's going to be great, but I think we're giving them too much credit for the awesome environment and art direction. Like, we've mm -hmm. already awarded them for having incredible environments and art direction. I'm not sure that the story is going to live up to the Tomb Raider story because I'm really excited about these this concept of a vulnerable Laura Croft, of learning her origins, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the Guardian of Light stuff was pretty solid. Yeah. So I mean, see. they have some very... Uh, big potential payoff moments in Tomb Raider. I mean, imagine, is there going to be the first time where she finds her pistols? You yeah. know, like her classic weapon. Is yeah. that going to be at the end of the game, you know, and she kind of picks them up and now it's like, this is my character or something like that. And you have those moments that will then kind of encapsulate if you've been playing this franchise for 15 years, like, oh, it's on, you know, just like... Like when Bond know, orders the martini for yeah, the first Yeah, or, you time. know, Batman gets his first, you know, Batarang thing, you're like, yeah. oh, dude, this is coming yeah. together. Like, this is developing into what I, I know this character can be. And similarly, so, we'll experience Laura Croft's first kill, you know, the first life that she takes. That, interesting to that see is how true. they handle that so, one as well. I, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. There's probably more moments that can be really powerful in, in Laura Croft. Um than, than potentially Bioshock. And then how about the studio reputation as the last thing to evaluate if we're looking at Irrational versus Crystal Yeah, Dynamics. I mean, Irrational's had a pretty pretty awesome <clears throat> run in this generation. Um, and, you know, Crystal, I think, is coming back. Um, I, I think they had a couple years there um, where it's a little tough for them, but I think they're coming back. And I like I've said before, Guardian of Light was one of my favorite games uh, when it came out that in that XBLA cycle. So... Um, if they can deliver on that quality, I'll, I'll start considering them uh, one of the kind of more top tier developers. I think as it stands right now, the Irrational team has the reputation coming into this. Um, I hope that, uh, that Crystal can deliver on what the hype has been. All right, so let's tally it up. Um, running through it in your head, you know, we've talked a little bit about story, about environments, about characters. We talked about sound and graphics, about the studio. Who's got it? I think I have to put my vote to Bioshock. I think it's uh, it's a game that's been in development for a long time with a really talented team, and they've got a formula that they're building a foundation off of that is just kick-ass and has already delivered two fantastic games in this generation. Um, now we take a look at, it, at the Uncharted series, though, and Uncharted 3 was rated lower than Uncharted 2. Even though it may have been a better game. Yeah, and but so it was wasn't... Bioshock 2 was rated lower. But it, even though if you were just comparing the two games in a vacuum, you would say 2 is better than 1, or Uncharted 3 is better than Uncharted no, 2. Uncharted 3 is not better than maybe Uncharted 2. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But the point <laughs> is, it's not about which game was actually better. It's about, there's so much more that goes into a meta score than just the objective game in a vacuum. It's like, how are you advancing the medium? The critics look at that. How are you addressing the latest, you know, game design, this, that, the other? Mm -hmm. um, how is your game a reflection of the year? How does it stack up against other titles that you're released against? Yeah. So there's a lot going into it. So Bioshock 2 was a great game, and Tomb Raider is not building off of anything. Do we really think that Bioshock 3 is going to be able to uphold the meta score? So I think the difference is I don't, I don't really consider this Bioshock 3. I mean, it's right. in such a different world. Um, with all new characters, all new weapons, all new combat mechanics. So you're saying that the Bioshock um, 2, 2 success is only upside for them? Uh, I think so. I mean, I think that's probably created uh, more credibility in kind of their, their bank um, and gotten more people familiar with, with the franchise and how it works. Um, I mean, I think probably the, the, the thing that carries over the most is kind of the plasmid-type yep. powers, um, which people love. Um, but I think, you know, Bioshock Infinite is... Uh, is a lot different from what Bioshock 2 and Bioshock 1 were going to be than, than the way like Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 3 followed a very similar Fair enough. Um, pattern. I, you know, it's tough to say what I think is going to Metacritic higher, which I think Bioshock might have the edge versus what I am actually potentially more excited to play. I'm actually more excited, I think, to play Tomb Raider simply because I want to know if they nail it. Yeah. Like, is this team going to be able to deliver on this franchise that has been pretty stagnant for almost a decade 
And are they going to nail it? And if they do, that's going to be really exciting. And they're set up for success. Yeah. I mean, I love a story like that. It's almost like a Cinderella story for, for gaming. Yeah. Um, you know, Duke Nukem had the chance to do it and just totally bombed. And that was so disappointing. But imagine had Duke Nukem Forever been like a 90 rated game. How cool that would have been yeah. um, for both Gearbox and for you know the legacy of what 3D Realms used to be and for gamers to like bring the franchise back in the new generation but they dropped the ball yeah if Tomb Raider can deliver on that for this franchise that's gonna be really exciting more exciting in my opinion for an industry standpoint than uh you know Bioshock delivering another great title which is kind of expected um but in terms of probably where I'd if I were a bet man where I'd put my confidence I'd probably say Bioshock is the kind of safer bet yeah well i'm just playing devil's advocate because i gotta be honest like from even when we started with just eight teams i still knew that bioshock was going to be a front runner here i mean i think this game it can't not get a 90 meta score like, I would all be the amazed. things that we've seen so far uh the team that's behind it the environments building on that foundation of great gameplay that tradition of excellent storytelling mm -hmm. um and and all the technical expertise that they have as well um they just, they have a track record. They're going to yep. deliver. They have a great idea, and they've got the right people executing against it. I think that they've got a great idea with Tomb Raider, and I hope and truly do believe that they've got the right team executing against it, but they don't have the same track record. So yep. if I'm placing my bet, I'm going with Bioshock Infinite. All right, I guess we're both Bioshock. So it advances it to the finals. Forward. Bioshock. Well, now Ooh. that takes us. That was a tough call. That was a tough call. That's a tough call. And I'll stand by what I said. I am really, really looking forward to Tomb Raider. Uh, I'm really looking forward to playing that game. <laughs> All right, time for a quick break. More March Madness when we get back.